The Howard Stern Show is on vacation, but don't worry, we'll return with all new serious shows very soon. So for now, enjoy this encore episode. Great show for you today. Salva Stockbroker and the Lighting of the Teeth. I'll give you more details oh, on that. that. I've got my Salva Stockbroker uh, program already. Oh, my program. Goodness. Yeah, there's yeah, a program. Yeah, program's printed up. Yeah, there's a big Christmas. It's called the Baba Booey Foulmouth Christmas Festival, the Lighting of the Teeth by Salva Stockbroker. And inside you can see Look at all the different geez. It looks like a activities. church program. Yeah, there's all the different activities of what's going to be going on today. He has some free time, doesn't he? There's an opening introduction. And they're going to sing Gary the Horse Tooth Monkey. Then they have the Lighting of the Teeth speech. And then uh, Baba Wonderland. <laughs> then the actual Lighting of the Teeth. Did uh, Baba Bowie decide that he would be a participant? <laughs> I don't know yet. I don't know anything about it. Uh, Sal wanted him to throw the switch. And then there's even some words that you can sing along with. Oh, they got the lyrics printed there. That's right. Gary the Horse Tooth Monkey, he'll sing Baba Wonderland. I know they said when the tree or the teeth are lit, he'll go into a live version of Mouth Wide Open. Yeah, Mouth Wide Open. So that's <laughs> going to happen later in the show. You're going to actually see the stockbroker put together some big thing that he's doing out on the street here. He built a giant head, he says. Yeah. Of Gary's teeth. Yeah, I, I don't know. So just was downstairs, and uh, it's a mess down there. They set up a whole band in the underpass, which is, first of all, against this building's policy because mm-hmm. they don't have permission. And number two... They can't even do it on the street because they need a permit from the city, which apparently they don't have. So the cop said they will arrest the organizer if uh, if they don't present a permit. And who's the and they, and they can, Which is Sal, the stockbroker, the schmuck. But if they don't present a permit, they will arrest him if they continue to move forward with, uh, with his planned demonstration, is what they're calling it. I don't know about a demonstration, but... Uh, Sal's event will put him in jail if he goes forward with it. So Sal, the stockbroker, decided on his own that he was going to do the lighting of the teeth downstairs at our building. And what's going on? Uh, go to line one right away because uh, I think they're about to take him away. Uh, what? Sal, what happened? Hey, oh, wait, hold on a sec. Sal? Oh, here comes Sal now. I can Howard. see. You. Sal, I can see you. What's going on? You got your drums down there, the lighting of the teeth. What is going on? Well, I have the whole band set up in this this, this little thing here. You know, he's bouncing off the walls because we don't. We have everything set up here, and he's telling me to go, and they just called down the cops. It looks like the uh, Christmas festival may be a bust here. So far, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> Gary's all that's broken real, that's up. Real, you know, Sal, it was a really w- well-thought-out plan that you would just plug into the building's electricity okay. and get no hey, permits listen, and everything. Listen, 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 listen Manu, keep quiet for one second, okay? <laughs> the inefficiency of your staff that this thing turned to be a bust anyway, just like your filthy teeth. You know Let what, me tell you, you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. I contacted Doug. I spoke to Doug over the course of a week. This was the safest area. This is where a lot of the Howard Stern Show bits were conducted. But not ban- to- bands don't play out there. Listen, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. no different. It's no different than some cheese bowl band that's setting up in a subway station. It's nothing. No, elaborate. no, those guys actually get permits. Some of them, and the ones that don't get moved along. Well, I made a few phone calls. You made a few mistakes, is what you. Let me understand what you had planned for today, Sal. So I understand you had a giant tooth. Built. Yeah, like that. We have the illumination that we're going to have uh, Gary come down and light up. We have the songs. We have everything all set You have up. a giant tooth decorated with Christmas lights. Where is that? I don't even see that down yeah. there. The giant, it's, it's, it's off to the side. We have, 
that's off to the side. That hasn't even been mounted yet. I mean, as soon as we got here, I, you know. You I have a like fold. I, I felt like O.J. walking out of Nicole's house for the first time, you know, when the cops pulled up. It's ridiculous. And you have a full rock band out there to sing uh, various Christmas songs yeah. and, 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 and mouth wide open. How much yeah, did you, you know spend? What, you know what we'll do, Howard? We'll continue with the festivities. It'll take us 10 minutes. We'll bring the band upstairs. We'll set up and we'll get this party rolling for you. We'll, we won't let you down. And well, we got to see we got to see the lighting of the tooth. Sure. Well, how much did he spend? I well, want to uh, too much. Thousands. If you, take, if, you, if you take all of Gary's teeth and times it by ten, it still was more than that. <laughs> all right. So you're going to you're going to bring this stuff upstairs so we can yeah, at least we'll bring see. the band up. We'll set up in ten minutes. We'll get the party rolling. We're going to have the whole festivity come on. Maybe we'll bring up a few people too. All right. You very. Know, maybe right. the tooth would look good in our lobby. Anybody maybe it would. Upstairs for the Howard Stern show. Uh, High pitch oh. Eric wants to go out. Wait, uh, there's a couple of hot chicks out there. I'll tell you that. Girl. Who are those good looking girls with you? Oh, these are these are my little bitches. These are the toothy bitches that I'm with. Yeah, they got all two. You know, see, I had the dentist on standby here in case Gary's teeth got out of control. I have the toothy girls here. They have their toothbrushes for Gary for Christmas. You don't you don't see the guy we really are, we are the guy using the teeth today. The we guy really the teeth. You really did a lot of preparation, didn't you? Yeah. So I got some beautiful hot girls. We're going to get the band upstairs, and the festivities will continue for the lighting of the teeth. All right, thank you, Sal. Well, there he is. He will not be shut down. He will not be shut down, Sal, the stockbroker. <laughs> Boy, he, he really was not well thought out, was he, no, Gary? No, no. I tried to indicate to him the other day when I said, do you have a permit that this was not something you just do? You know, I, yeah. think, it's, I think he thinks, hey, I'm Sal. You right. know. I'm Sal the stockbroker. It's for the Howard Stern right. show. They'll let me. I heard, I heard that he called over there and said he was an employee of the company, and they told him they didn't care that he wasn't getting any permits. Right. So Sal's uh, a big lighting outside has gone bust. Almost, almost went to jail, huh? For what? Isn't it worth going to jail for your art? Yeah, I guess you could say that, you know what I mean? Sort of like it's worth Gary going to the dentist for his teeth, you know? But the thing is, it, it's just the inefficiency, the incompetence. This is the greatest show of all time. And these are the idiots, the monkeys that run around, the elves, the dwarves, the bags of crap that cater to this show. And nobody can put anything together. Nobody can overcome the legalities. Nobody can make a show enjoyable. So... Jackass number one right here. Right. right here, man. He's he, right. This guy represents Gary's bottom teeth, okay? The other guy represents Gary's top teeth. All right, it's like all right, Gary's I, I, I got to talk to you about this. Listen. Talk to you. Okay, listen. Some homosexual the, the, the stuff. Band, <laughs> the band. I am not blowing you. Are you going to listen to me? I am Are not you blowing you. Yeah. Yeah. The band is not coming in. All right, the band's not coming in. Oh, Can great. you do any of your songs acoustically? Um, with my acoustic guitar? Yeah. Can you do that? Can you How sing about I get a guy to the right of me? Uh-huh. With an acoustic, yes. Okay. All right. And, and the girls, will they sing too, or...? No, the girls were just going to be like, you know... Just be back. dancing in the back? Right, right, right. They have two okay. brushes. They're hard. Right, so do your I whole need, thing. I need... I need as it occurs, I'm going to have the guys come in, the three band members, and the four girls. They'll have hats and the acoustic guitars. The guys. All right. How many acoustics do you have? Two acoustics? Two acoustics. But it's only, you know, I should let the other, just let the other, the, the, the drummer in. Does too, he I mean. sing too? Yeah, he sings. He's going to be singing in the background like Smelly Teeth, Smelly Teeth, and does Ba Ba Boo. Okay. So, so it's, it's uh, the three, the band members and the girls. Three band members, four girls. And High Pitch Eric, because he's holding the lighting of the teeth. Uh, let me teeth. check that out. Hold on a second. So Sal got kicked off the street with his Baba Booey tribute and Christmas presentation. He's going to come up here and do some sort of lighting of the teeth and uh, a couple of songs. about 90 people now yeah. in the hall. Yeah. He had such a production. He had a big show oh put goodness. together, but the police kicked him off the street. Today is the Baba Booey Foul Mouth Christmas Festival. It's the lighting of the teeth. It's dedicated to all the horses, the monkeys, the donkeys, the dumb producers from around the world. This is the one and only first annual lighting of the teeth. Never mind that big bag of green and needles at Cockerfella Center. We got our own big bag of green crap right here. Plucked right underneath those red, filthy lips. This is what it's all about. It's the lighting of the teeth. There's so much involved here. I mean, those teeth are so special. It's like the hunchback in Notre Dame. You know, he's been beat on and, and ridiculed, and people have spit on him his whole life. And then finally, he's been praised. He's been put on a pedestal. Today, we put Baba Bowie's teeth on a pedestal. We light it up, and we realize that it's nothing more than what it appears to be, a big bag of crap. The lighting of the teeth. All right, let's uh, meet Sal, the stockbroker, who's been working tirelessly on this Christmas special of his. A, Bob, a very Baba Booey Christmas. <laughs> Sal, the stockbroker, is obsessed with Gary Delabate's teeth. Hi, Sal. How are you? <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. And Sal has a bunch of people with him, like High Pitch Eric and a whole bunch of other people. Oh, God. All right. And what about the lighting of the teeth? <laughs> well, Howard... Yeah. I want to welcome everybody to the Baba Booey Foul Mouth Christmas Festival featuring <clears throat> the lighting of the teeth. All right. Now, you were going to do this out on the street and the police threw you out. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, the police stopped due to the inefficiency once again of your staff. 
my staff? What did it my was staff? Your celebration. Doug Goodstein is a schmuck on wheels. I mean, that guy's a complete moron. You know what? And he, Why? What is he supposed you to do? You're just trying to deflect. You're such a no, douchebag. No, you, know? you are a douchebag. You, your glasses are on way too tight. You look, look, look like George, a freaking troll. Look at that. You look got at purple. You, you look like mean, a faggot. You look like a troll. You look like Santa's little helper, but you should be underneath his desk or underneath his sleigh. Keep quiet. All right, let me get into it without Doug speaking for once. Stop. Yeah, what? Necessary. Anyway, this is what happened. Yeah. I spoke to Doug. He said, look, you know, it's Howard Stern show. You get in, you get out. You do it in front of Benny Hanna's. You get a, get a permit. I called for the permit. Right. Spoke, and you couldn't get one. Spoke to the lady, and she right. said, look, you know, you're in and you're out. It's not a big deal. Okay. Right. Uh, spoke to someone. Not a lady, excuse me. And uh, that was basically it. When I came down there, I think it was Gary's grandfather or something. I mean, you know, the guy was a master. Right. So you, you, we had nothing to do with this. You tried to get a permit. You couldn't get one. I wanted to do a show outside for the people. And okay. it, it was rejected by the police, so here we are. We're right. in the studio. All right. You're in here. So Once instead again, of smelling Gary's breath outside, we're smelling it inside. You know, it's, there's really nothing different. All right. And you have a poster that High Pitchark is holding of giant teeth. That is the lighting of the teeth, by the way. All right. Now, when are you going to light that up? Uh, we're going to light that up at, uh, once we have uh, Santa Mouth come in here and light it up himself. We're going to do a big ceremony, three, two, one. And we're, and, uh, and you've got a whole entourage with you. Where'd you get all these uh, beautiful women? Hi, girls. Where'd uh, you get all these beautiful hi. women? Hi. Uh, they're, they're all friends hi. of mine. They're all hooked hi. up. They're all hooked up with the uh, Ivy Supersonic. I uh, yeah. she was my coordinator and all this, so we put it all together. I haven't slept for a week. Right, Ivy, you coordinated on? this whole thing? Yes, I did. You did. All right. So all the beautiful he- women are here with Ivy Supersonic, who is a uh, hat designer. And your hat. And you have my hat. I have your hat. Good. I need a hat. <laughs> yes. Are you allowed to introduce ourselves? Uh, yes, honey, but yeah. first we're going to do the lighting of the teeth. Okay, no problem. All right. So, yeah, this is about Sal, not about you. By the way, next year, Howard, next year we're going to have an even bigger show. Next year, we already contacted David Blaine. He's going to stand in Gary's mouth for three days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Gary. Uh, wait, wait, what is this? Yeah, Gary. Oh, it's the monkey. My God, stop, please. Where's the tree? There All right. There's, there's, there's there it is. Right over here. And by the way, who needs a big bag of green needles in Rockefeller Center? We have our own big bag of green crap right here, <laughs> plopped under those red smelly lips. Three, two, one. And there's, the, and there's the lighting of the teeth. This is unbelievable. One small set of teeth for man. One tremendously large set of teeth for mankind. This you, is, you must have worked this in this is, well over wow. two, three minutes, huh? Wow. This is very, very emotional. <laughs> very, very emotional. All right, now, Sal, you have a musical, years a musical I mean, accompaniment I'm, I'm from a guitar player. What is your name, sir? I'm Rob, the guitar player. All right, Rob and Sal is going to sing now. Go ahead, Sal. Sing some of your holiday songs. Okay, we're going to start off with a little bit of uh, Gary the Horse Tooth Reindeer, the Horse Tooth Monkey. Sal, do you ever think that you're getting way obsessed with Gary and his yes. teeth? After this, I'm going right to my psychiatrist's <laughs> office. This is just too much. Somebody <laughs> told me that in your early history as a young man, you had very big teeth. And yeah. you never could get your teeth fixed. Matter of fact, my wife always threatens me. She has a sixth grade picture of me. My teeth look like a train wreck. They do. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm Gary's long lost son. I mean, <laughs> Charles, don't you think this whole thing is borderline gay? Yeah. Uh, it borders on gay. Your, your lips on my penis? Yeah, I could say that. It would be no, really. No, I don't but, think you can but, say that. Yeah, but no. again, the, well, obsession, the obsession with me, it's, it's almost like you love me. Like you're Anybody gay Anybody who me. matches his plumage with his clothing. I, I mean, asking me if I'm gay. It, I can't it go doesn't match. Further. I can't go any further with that. It doesn't match. The only thing that matches Look, the teeth Sal and lips and gums. Now, he's singing into a big toothbrush. <laughs> right. You have a giant toothbrush that you sing into. <laughs> that's, a, that's right. I, special, we have I use this to rub brush. my back and to brush Gary's teeth with, and I also sing my songs into it. Right. Okay. And okay. you know what? For Christmas, I was going to buy Gary a water pick, but I just All right, Sal. Let's... Find, wait a minute. I couldn't find a fire department who would donate their hoses to me. <laughs> All right, Sal. Are you ready to sing your songs? A little Gary the Horse Tooth Monkey. All right. For the Bob Sal Bob. loves to perform about Gary. <laughs> you know there's Jackie and Fred and Scott the Engineer. Robin and Howard and his friend Ralph that queer. And last but not least, the producer with big smelly teeth. One, two, three, four. Gary the Horse Tooth Jackass. Big smelly teeth And if you ever saw them You would want to soak them in bleach All of the other monkeys Said his bread smelled like ass Even his child molester Gave him ice cream but he wore a gas mask Then one foggy Christmas Eve Our came to say Gary, with your teeth and fro, you be a big kick on my radio show. <laughs> then how the monkeys love you. 
they made Baba Booby their friend. Gary, you horse tooth monkey. Sal, the stockbroker, pranked you again. You smell like. Thank you, thank you very much. You know what, Howard? I really wanted to praise Gary today. You know, like uh, Quasimodo yes. and Hunchback yes. of Notre Dame? Yes. They threw crap at him. The kids yelled at him. He was looked upon as a, as a total mess. And, a, a, and, a, and The thing is that today, we celebrate Gary's teeth. <laughs> right. We put his teeth on a pedal stool. We turn it around. We turn the tables. The way right. his lips turn inside out every time he smiles. Now, now, Sal, you have one more song you want to do? I have a special ending for the Toothy special. And what is it? All your, all your girlfriends here are going to be dancing? Is that yeah, it? Yeah, we're going to have them dance and do a little ceremonial Toothy dance. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. The and girls who... I, dance. Girls, where are you, what are you, models? Is that what you do for a living? I am a rock star, freelance superstar. You're a rock star? Do, yeah. we, do we know your band? Um, you will. Oh, I see. You're a rock star, but you haven't become the star yet. You're just a rock. I'm recording, <laughs> I'm recording stuff with Bad Boy. I'll be a real glitzy motherfucking rock. Well, I don't know that we can say that. Sorry. All right. Howard, yeah. oh, by the way, um, anybody at home can also sing along. What okay. about the rest of the girls? These are the girls who are in your band also? These girls are in the band. That's right. They, you know, they're on the top to two. No, I'm feet. trying to find out who everyone is. Who And who are you? Hi, I'm Jenna Jones. I'm a model for Ivy Supersonic. But oh, you're a I'm model. A scratch shirt today. You're not a, you're not a, um, uh, a rock star. <laughs> Part-time rock star. Right. Today I'm modeling for Ivy Supersonic. I see. How do you girls make a living? Like, what, what does a girl like you do? I'm an advisor to WallStreetGals.com. WallStreetGals.com? Yeah. What is that, a porno site? No, it's uh, actually it's a lot nicer. It's Playboy I, meets the Wall Street, so... Wait, I never know what any of these girls do to make a living. Everybody's got a business. Everybody's got a dot com and a something. Thank God dot for the tooth. Internet. Nobody's got like a normal gig. A dentist. What are you? I'm a dentist. Dentist. You're, you're Susie, the dentist. You're real, a real dentist. No. 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 Phony uh, that's dentist. what I mean. Yeah. Like, how do you make a living the rest of the week? Pardon? How do you make a living the rest of the week? Do you really week? have Very to ask, Howard? No, really. Seriously, how do you make a living? I'm a caterer. Oh, you're a caterer. Yeah. Okay, so you cater parties. I do. All right, so there's somebody with a normal job. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, I'm Finesse, and I'm a celebrity specialist. <laughs> What's that? What is that? Uh, um, I work different parties, different events. You know, you, I take care of all the celebrities. Host. I'm a hostess, basically. You're not like a, ah! you know... You're not like a what? An escort. Like an escort. Are you an escort? No, Because no, she takes no. care of all the celebrities. <laughs> I know what. I'm a celebrity. I know what I would like to be Has taking care of. Has she ever been with you? Yeah. When are you going to take care of me? Yeah. I want to. What? Come to some of the parties that I hosted. Really? I don't get invited. Howard, do you have any idea what one person in this room does for a living? No. Except for the caterer. The caterer girl I do. Let's right. go back. Okay. The rock star chick, how do you get paid? Like, what do you do during the day? I make music. That's it. Yeah, but I mean, does anyone pay you for that? Who supports? Um, yeah, sometimes. Does like, someone you support know, you? Do, and stuff. Do you have a boyfriend who pays for you? No, like gigs, you know. And when you don't get a gig for a month, how do you pay the rent? I think is a question. Oh, I used to do commercials before, so I get money from that stuff. Was it commercials for yeah. what? Like where, I did um, an NBA commercial with Alan Houston from the Knicks and Adidas commercial with El Duque, um, an MTV commercial. Like you know, so, do you stuff. have almost no money to your name? No, I've got I've got money. You do. So you get some money, and and you get these modeling jobs every once in a while. Is yeah. that it? Oh, I see. And what about your friend over there next to you? How do you like? How do you make a living? I'm a club promoter. A club promoter. A club now, what is that? How do you get into that kind of work? It's an amazing thing. You're in a club. You play enough in a club, and eventually, you may be asked to come in and make a living doing that. You know, you know how that works, Howard. If I'm not mistaken, tell me if I'm wrong. Oh, she's a very good-looking girl. Is that is that the reason? In other words, they want you to Probably. be at the club walking yeah. around. No, no. I, you do a night at a club, and they give you the, you, you hand out these cards, and your name is stamped on the back, and everyone that comes in, you get like five dollars off of the over the cover charge to get in. How many people you can bring to the club? That's how it works. Yeah, no, that's not the way it works for me. It works that way for some promoters. <laughs> Explain to me, seriously. Yeah. I, how do you like? Can you make a couple of grand a week doing this? You could make a couple of grand a week. I don't. But and you very you, you you I hang out at the week. club. One night a week. What club do you hang out at? Spa. Spa. And what do you do there? Like you just hand out. I, am, cards? I invite people that I actually enjoy, that are fun and interesting, to come and hang out on Thursday nights. And, that, and they pay you for that. Ivy Supersonic was hanging out last Thursday night with me. Can you promote a party in Gary's mouth if you hand out enough uh, passes? You know what? <laughs> no, Howard, I'm with you. I still <laughs> don't understand how party. you make money one Why night a week. She only works one night a week. See, that's what I want to yeah. do. See, I know, like, li- like, I see a lot of hot chicks at the at clubs and stuff, and I wonder, gee, how do they stay out all night during the week? Like, don't they have to get up and go to work? No, is the qu- answer. And the answer is no. <laughs> so do you sleep all day, pretty much? I have a day a day job too. I work ah. for Slima, the eyewear designer. I work all the time. You work for an eyewear designer time. doing what? Um, in different stores that she has. Um, she has some really interesting, cool conceptual stores. But what do you do? Like Lunettes of chocolat. What do you do? 
fit yeah. people that are, are really looking for something interesting and new and crazy. So you, you give people eyeglasses and you try yeah. them on people? and you The wildest eyeglasses that we oh, can Oh, so you're find. a saleswoman? I do. So I there's your answer. Oh, oh there's your answer. Works okay. Finally, it only took 25 minutes. It took 25 hours and to find out what teeth. Nah. Yeah. All right. So then we got to the bottom of it. You do have a day job. I do. Yeah. I work, I work two days a week doing that job, and then I work a night a week club promoting, and I'm basically all the time out having a good time with these girls. So if I want to be a club promoter, I go around to hip people, and I get them to come to the club, and then how do they pay you? Per person that you bring in? No. Just a, a flat salary? Flat salary. What, what do they give you? Like 200 bucks for that? A few hundred. 300 bucks. 300 bucks. Yeah. Well, that's enough to get by. Yep. Yeah. Casey ought to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a decent job. It is. All right, girls. Now I understand. <laughs> I think. <laughs> what was that? I got a show on pay-per-view where I paint pictures of nude lesbian women. Nice. It's on pay-per-view in demand. You're not a hot chick. What do I care? <laughs> Honestly. All right, Sal, what are you going to do? All right, now a very special rendition for the Foul Mouth Toothy Festival. Here is Sal the Stockbroker. Here we go. Kick it in, Joancy. <laughs> this goes out to the iceberg that sunk the Titanic. <laughs> to the, the World Trade Bomb Center bombing. And to Toothy Moto over here. Toothy Moto. Santa Mouth. Santa Mouth. You're a little nervous. I can see that. Well, every time I look at his teeth, I get nervous. You know? It's like Sodom and Gomorrah when they look back. All right. All I right. want to dedicate this song to all the people with handicaps. Get it? Handicaps? <laughs> right. I want to dedicate this to all the chimpanzees that have given their life, you know, in, in uh, Tarzan movies and in zoos. I want to give this, uh, you know, dedicate this uh, song to Mr. Ed. For his teeth, he, he basically led the path. He opened it up for Gary and his teeth. Gary's teeth obviously came first. And uh, that's basically it, you know. And uh, I hope one day that we can all come together and use Gary's teeth as a symbol to unite. The same way they unite with his gums and his lips. <laughs> there will never be unity like that ever again. So never mind that big bag of green needles in Cockefeller Center. We have our own big bag of green crap right here. All right. Fafa Futi. Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you, Sal. Hey, hey Santa, Santa, bring Gary a big, fat, smelly toothbrush. Hey, Sal, can I ask you a question? What the hell is that? That's high pitch. Yo, I do gay. Why do you say that high pitch? Because he always... Because he Eric, he... Eric, you don't understand. Eric is like a fungus on your nuts. You cannot shake him loose. What is it? What is... It's <laughs> unbelievable. This guy calls me all day at my office. This big, fat, smelly mess. All day long, I can't shake this guy. What, do you, what is it's it, like Eric? It's like a disease. because no, he's gay because like... he always tells stuff about Gary. And I don't even do that. Listen. <laughs> listen. Like I said. You're still gay. Cause him I'm not gay. <laughs> Eric's another story, another day, All right, another show. Another show. Howard, All right. Listen, yeah. Howard, by the way, I created, real quick, Toothy, uh, I created the Baba Booey Toothy Piano. You can play Jingle Bells on Gary's Teeth. Yes. At regland.com, and I have all this new animation coming out, and I hope, hope hopefully one day, uh, Howard, me and you will write the Baba Booey 3D special. All right, special. thank you, Sal. Take care, Howard. God bless. So that's it, guys. Lighting of the Teeth is over. You know, I want to thank you for coming and joining the festivities. We'll see you next year when David Blaine stands in Gary's mouth for three days. That's going to be a really big event, a big stunt. Special thanks to Ivy Supersonic putting it together, making it happen. And a special thanks to Sal, who's a genius. Of course, I know that. We well, wouldn't be here without you, you genius. Special thanks to Gary's teeth. Without Gary's teeth, I would not be here. Gary's really mad. He's really offended about the teeth. He wouldn't take my $500 right, yeah, yeah. Is he in there? I just have to... Yeah, he really, he really... Uh, so, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. I'll wait. So, yeah. That was quite a salute, man. Thank you, thank you. I thought it was kind of nice. It was a nice tribute to the teeth. Would you agree? You know what I mean? You know, at the holidays, the holidays, you know, they have a... Most people forget about the teeth. Yeah, you have a tendency, you know, to, to have a soft spot, a soft spot in your body, you know, basically come forward, you know, and that, that's how I felt today. I felt like today was my job to salute the teeth and, and to make a tribute to the teeth, you know what I mean? Instead of knocking him for that foul handicap of his, today we decided to amplify it, to bring it forward, to make people realize that even a deformity like Gary's, if he can overcome it, maybe we can all overcome our deformities. I don't know. Hey, I got to tell you a story. So, you know, Sal came in and did his whole uh, thing. Yeah. This is changing the topic entirely. <laughs> Sal did his horse tooth, whatever it is, against Gary. The lighting of the teeth. The lighting whatever. of the teeth. And one of the hot chicks there comes up to me afterwards and says, uh, Hey, Howard, do you want, uh, she used a, a different initials, but she said, Do you want uh, oral sex? What? Yep. A very good right looking in girl. In front of everybody. Front of everyone. Out of people. a clear blue sky. Right. And I said, oh, uh, excuse Which me? Which one? <laughs> I, wait, wait, wait. I said, excuse me? What did you say? And she said, do you want, she says, uh, oh, I have Tourette's. 
I said, oh, I wish I'd known that we would have put your mic. She goes, I don't really have Tourette's. I'm just telling you, do you want... Now, I don't know if she was serious or not. Wait a minute. Which one was it? Well, oddly enough, she's tried to get on the show before because she has very... Un- here, here she is. She's a hot chick. Yeah, she's smoking. When she said it, I was a little freaked out. Were you flattered? Hey, baby. The she was really I flattered? Did yeah. Oh, well, you're so sweet, Howard. Well, you're pretty. Who wouldn't? Got Your name up. is what, Susie? It's Susie McCoppin, yes. Hi, Susie. Hello, darling. Were you serious when you asked me that? I was actually being a little facetious. I was oh. trying... Oh, but, okay. What, do I have to leave now? That? No, no, you don't have to leave. I'm, I just... I'm open for negotiation. All right. You got a boyfriend? <laughs> no. Really? Really. A chick like you doesn't have a boyfriend? I have a really abrasive personality. Oh, you do? Yes. Yeah, I see. And yeah. she's aware of it. I can't handle that. <laughs> That's half the battle, right, Robin? Are you lesbo or... No. Uh, no. Uh-uh. Into guys? Okay. Sure, into guys. I don't know. She doesn't seem that abrasive to me, is she? I could see where it could go with a few drinks. Ah, shut up. See, there it goes. Ah, there, it there it is. I'm just, You're I'm, a tough gal. I'm a, a tough check, yes. How old abroad are you, can I ask? Yes, I'm 25. 25? Mm. 30. Mm. <laughs> who, who, who sneezed the word 30 uh, against my that girlfriend? Would be Fred. Oh. How dare you? All right, you're not getting a blowjob. Oh, well, you can't oh, say that. You can't Ooh. Say that. No, you can't say Oral sex. Oral sex. Pardon, oral sex, okay. Right. Fred. Fred. Now, let me understand something. So when, so when you said, hey, Howard, would you like oral sex, you were kidding around. I was trying to charm you. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, it did. It worked. <laughs> you definitely right? got my got attention. attention. Wonderful. I got attention. I thought, I, I thought you were for real. I, I was too good to be true. you were going to accept it right here, right now. Right? I wanted it now. Uh-huh. I need it right this I, second. I think my father's listening, actually. It would be a go otherwise. I see. <laughs> well, do you do that with a lot of guys? Do you offer them oral sex right up front? I mean, is that your oh, come online? Who else have you offered it to? <laughs> yeah. I mean, or, or is it tough to get you, or are you pretty easy? Um, it depends on the amount of alcohol I've consumed, I guess. Right. I think it's tough to get her with the microphones on, because her dad's listening, and I think it's a lot easier with the microphones. Microphones off. Is that what you're saying? Is, is he correct? Not, no, not necessarily. All right. But I, I was kind <laughs> of freaked out. Do you out. offer this to all famous people? or uh, This was actually one of my initial famous encounters. So maybe this oh. will be my MO because it's obviously been successful. Did, were, you, were you at all attracted to me, though? Or were you kidding I'm, around? I'm feeling something. You are? Yeah. Oh, oh well, then, then that's good. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, it was kind of like a line like, hey, hey Howard, you want this? But- I was putting my feelers out. I just wanted to see if you bit. Oh, I'll bite. All right. He jumped. He jumped. I jumped. <laughs> You're hot. So, wait a second. Now, here's something weird. Yep. I heard you were trying to get on the show for a while because someone just handed me a naked picture of you. Okay. All right. And in the naked picture, you have uh, what they described. Your private parts are unusual because they're an Audi. Evidently. Well, this is news looked, to me. It this looked a little strange in the picture. You were never a man, right? Uh, not because I, I looked at the picture. I go, she's so hot, but but it, it, so, it, I, I had a brilliant surgeon. No, I don't. I don't recall ever being a man. She's oh. definitely always been a woman. I think. Yeah, now, why were you naked in this picture? First of all, do you work naked a lot? No, wait, it was actually. It was no. It was Ivy was doing a fashion show. At, I see. at Siren, and she just thought it would create a media frenzy if I was naked. Naked. I see. So you went out naked. They snapped a picture, and and your private parts were unusual because they were an Audi. That's very sweet of you to say. No, I've but, never heard. What are you talking about? I don't know. It looks a little. I just think it. the angle of the picture is weird. Let I don't. I can't. Look. I have. I would have you to see the anything? photograph. Actually, let me show you the photograph. Okay. Where, where, where do we do with it? Oh, there, uh, Casey. Oh, there it is. Take a look at that. And I, I wish I could show this on TV because. Ooh. I know I can't. Yeah, that does look a little odd. Doesn't it? Yes. You don't normally. It looks like you have what a man has between his legs. That's that's a shame. But wait a second. You I, it, show I, it to Robin. Show it to I, Robin. I think that's the. I think it's the angle, actually. I think it's the angle, right? I do. I have a pic. I have a naked picture in my portfolio. Oh. You do? <laughs> Robin, what is that? Uh-huh. She's like got a prominent and bone. And you can see it. Yeah. You know, you can. Yeah, my bone is fairly prominent, yeah, but you prominent can see bone. the genitals straight on in the portfolio. It even looks like your genitals in the wrong place, but I just think it's an odd picture. It's, it's sort of high, but you you've been in locker rooms with women. You get changed and everything. Sure, sure, have you sure. Looked at other women. I have and thought that maybe yours looks a little different. No, I, I have because I let me I, see you naked. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. You want to see me naked? Yeah. Do you care? Do it looks like you don't care. Well, I mean. well, I, I could show you the portfolio. I All think right, I'm kind of I'm kind of tied up here. Are you? Why? What are you tied up in? I'm let me see. in in the scrubbed oh. outfit. I can help you out of that. Oh, believe me, we can get we can rip that off. Yeah, here. I think should I <laughs> should I take off the thing and come over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me take a look because I I think I found a medical a medical problem with you. This is research. Let me see your portfolio. But what are you a model? Yeah, you're a model. Oh, there we go. All right. Chick's a hot chick. I hate to but see a deformity. She was a caterer. But you were a caterer, or you're a different chick. Um, I I do. I cater occasionally. Oh, okay. Well, see, you really have to kind of scrutinize right there. I guess a lingerie shoot. In the upper 
upper left corner, you can kind of see the crotch straight yeah, up. Yeah, you look normal there. Thank you. Yeah, I don't Aww. see any Audi. You know, instead of untying it, why don't you just lift it up? Let me see. Hey, Howard, they got a scissor. You want to cut it off? Cut off your clothes, what? please. You Let me see. What is that? Let me see that. There's obviously nothing extended. I don't see anything weird yeah, there. Yeah, it doesn't look... It looks normal in that environment. Yeah, you look normal there. Yeah, thanks. Well, it's just, you know, it's the weird. It's a weird angle. Oh, all right, shot. okay. That's but a you, you had a medical you problem. You were pitching yourself as an Audi. That's how they were. No, no, no. no. I, I was pitched as an Audi apparently by one of the producers here, and this was all news to me. I didn't realize that there was. Oh, it's not any true. Controversy though. at all. Yeah. This is a well, you're a hot chick. I'll tell you that, honey. Thanks, babe. There's no, there's no question about it. This is so exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you are not bad looking at all. all right. Well, okay. You know, your private parts are normal. Okay. All right. You've declared. Your book. Be you know, Howard? Yes. You know, I think she was in an off-Broadway show, correct? Yeah, I was in Tony and Tina's wedding. Oh, you were. And I hear she was very promiscuous uh, with the cast. Oh, what is that word? Promiscuous. promiscuous. Oh, promiscuous. I guess that's how I, I got cast initially. Is that right? You uh, have no. a lot of... No. I heard she was in a different cast, you know, member's room, you know, oh. you know each night. Oh, good God. Uh-huh. Is that true? Be honest. No, that's not true. Well, that's are you not loose? true. I'll ask you a question. You're 25 years old. How yeah. many guys would you say you slept with in your 25 years? Um, Roughly. Under 10. Under 10. Oh, that's not yeah. promiscuous. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 21. Is that right? It's true. All right, so you're not so loose. Yeah, oh, I'm not that loose. Right, you just have a reputation. <laughs> unless, she's, unless she's just doing that thing that she asked you to right. do. If she's doing that, then that's. Great. Are you walking up to everyone and offering them oral sex? <laughs> I, no, I do have somewhat of a screening process. Yeah, you do, all right. Somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> Pulse, ten fingers. I thought you were funny because she says to me, "Oh, I have uh, Tourette's." I go, "Oh, yeah, that's great. We'd love to have you on the show." Yeah, she goes, "No, oh, not oh, really." That's a great line, but she seems <laughs> to be doing the sputtering funny? John thing. You yeah. throw something out, right? And if it's you know nibbled on, then you go for it. Right, exactly. that's good. Yeah. I, you're kind of fading out there, Robin, but I think you're onto something. You now. know how to. Come Come on to a man. I'll I tell do, you that. I do. I do. Well, well you, you do. Yeah. That's a great line for you ladies. <laughs> I just patent it. This is a girl who understands how to get men. Well, anyway, it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure being met by you, Howard. And thank you for the offer of oral sex. You got it. Anytime. I'll that offer it anytime. Nice. Go ask Tom Chisano for oral sex because he, was, <laughs> he might go for it. All right. So you're done with me? I think so, yeah. All right. Bye. Nice meeting you. Nice looking girl. I'll tell you that. How'd I do? How'd I do? <laughs> you know what? It's just funny. And then Alfred, for some, and you're a very pretty woman, but then Alfred makes you look like a mental patient. It looks like, 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 it doesn't they, look they like a straight jacket. Like Bellevue. It looks like, it looks like <laughs> okay. Bellevue. I just, I'm just an escaping. How, how come you wouldn't show him? Um, I have too much integrity. <laughs> I thought it was a little up close and personal. But So you, were you serious with the offer about the oral sex? I was not serious. I'm sorry to be such a disappointment. Oh, well, that's a shame. It is a shame. <laughs> All right, Susie. Well, thanks for coming down. Thank you for having me.